I'm Junie the Orange Huntress and welcome to my channel where we bring the hunt home and the wild inside. Today I'm going to share with you some venison cooking tips that I found super helpful that I think will help you have success in the kitchen as well. If you're not a huge fan of the gamey flavor of venison yet, you might want to try a salt brine. You can make one by combining a quarter cup of kosher salt and four cups of water. You're going to place your roast, a whole roast, in that brine and brine it for 24 hours. If you have smaller cuts of meat, then you can do that same brine and only brine it for about 12 hours because it's going to get into the meat a lot easier. If you want to counteract some of that saltiness that the brine's going to give to your meat, you can add some sugar or peppercorns or any other herbs or seasonings to your brine. That way it works like a bit of a marinade as well as draws that gamey flavor out of your venison. Be sure to take the chill off your venison by pulling it out and leaving it on the counter for 20 minutes up to two hours before you start cooking with it. That way your meat will be juicier and cook more evenly for you. So this is what happens when you forget to take your backstrap out of the freezer. So I put it in the sink with some warm water. I'm just gonna let that sit and then when it's ready, I will cut it up into steaks. Venison is very lean, like well-trained athlete lean. So you do not need to cook it that long in the pan. The best internal temperature for venison is about 120 to 135. So that's rare to medium rare. Guys, do not, whatever you do, overcook your venison. This is going into the dog's food dish. Yeah. It was tough and dry. You might waste your venison if you cook it too long. Be sure to remove any excess liquid off your venison before you oil it and put it in your pan. That way, your venison will fry instead of boil. Remove any marinade or natural juices from your venison before you oil it by using a paper towel or dish towel. Then take your olive oil or whatever oil you're gonna use, liberally put that on, salt and pepper, and pop it in the pan. You can also put some extra olive oil in the pan as well and cook it over medium heat. And my favorite way of doing it is to add some butter and garlic and rosemary. Oh, it just is so amazing. For roasts and larger pieces of meat, you're gonna need to brown it on all sides before you start cooking it. Once you're done cooking your venison, don't forget this most important step, to let it rest. If you don't let it rest and you cut into it as soon as it's done cooking, all the juices are gonna pour out of it and your meat is not gonna be as flavorful as you want it to be. So set it on your counter, cover it with some foil, let it sit there for five to 10 minutes, and this way the juices will redistribute themselves throughout the meat and you will be amazed at how moist and juicy and flavorful your venison will be. 